Hello everyone and welcome back to another one of BI Consulting Services Power BI YouTube videos. So as you probably remember in our last video we just went through and sort of showed you how you could build out a reporter dashboard using some of your email campaign data and then some of your sales data. And so as you can see this was sort of the end byproduct or relatively close to the one that we built out during that last video and today I just want to take you over into edit queries and show you some of the pretty cool functionality that you can leverage inside this tool. A lot of folks you will find will do a lot of their transformations and work inside of Power BI once you get out of this page. I've actually realized that it's a lot easier to do some of these things inside of uh, edit queries. So I'm going to just go through and show you some of the functionality that I personally love to use, and I hope this is helpful to you. This will be a fairly short video. I know the last time I said that it wasn't short, but this one will definitely be a lot shorter. So let's start here. So let's see if we wanted to, let's say we wanted to see the days it takes for an order to be purchased on our website or whatever mechanism versus the day it actually ships out. So let's just see quickly how we could do that. So if you basically just hold, you know, just click one of the items that you want to look at. So that's order date. And then if you hit shift, you can also add in the ship date. So we're going to add a column from example here. And the system's pretty smart and probably can help you sort of in some cases where you'll be able to see sort of some transformations that are allowed throughout here. It may not give you exactly what you need. So in this case, I'm just going to do the math really quick in my head and hopefully the system will figure it out. So it looks like this order was purchased online or started online on the 8th and then it was shipped out on the 11th. So it was three days uh, between order date and ship date. Let's go down to the next one. Here you'll see again there's another order 8th and the 11th. Let's move down to the next one and as you can see the system has quickly identified what we're doing here. All we're doing is we're subtracting or in this case, it should be, <laughs> yep, we're subtracting. So we're saying, okay, we put the order in on this date. It shipped out on this date. So it took three days to get that order out to the customer. And you'll be able to see quickly that it's just done this for us, and it's called subtraction. So let's say all right, something simple, days to ship orders. There's our first KPI that we were going to want to look at within our report. We really want to know, you know, how many days is it taking for orders to ship out? Which types of orders are taking the longest to ship out? You know, what are the nuances associated with that? So that's pretty important information. Let's say you want to do something with a date. So depending on how you want to look at your data, maybe you want to look at it by week. Maybe you want to look at it by day. No matter what KPI it is that you want to actually leverage within your data set, it's always important you know, to have the date functionality work appropriately. So let's just say you want to know, you know, what day of the week is the prime day for purchases. So you can just add a day field here. You do it once the system immediately recognizes what you're what recognizes what you're trying to do, and then just adds that field in for you. Again, you can do the same thing again. So let's go out here and let's continue the process with date because I do this a lot. Let's say you want to just see the year. Uh, this is so intuitive that you can simply put in year and it'll know that you're pulling out the year. Let's say you want to look at start of week. So when you're trying to clean your data or look at it in a clean fashion, it's always nicer to look at it from this sort of start of week functionality that Power BI allows for you to do. So again, start of week. So now you can look at all orders that were shipped out during that week. And you can also see what the average days to get that order shipped out is. So there's all this key information that you can begin to drop, dive into if you can just use some of these add columns from example functionality that Power BI has inside this tool, which I think is pretty cool. Let's see if there's anything else we might want to pull out here. Add column from example. Let's see if there's any other key information points that we may want to look at. Okay, let's see. I think we're pretty good now. I think that we've got, relatively speaking, a handful of KPIs that are extremely important in this data set. Um, again, this is just one of those functions that you can use, and there's a few other things. Let me just show you real quick. I think it's always helpful. 
So I know in my last video I said, hey, I just did this on my own, created this column, and, and went ahead and put the test email campaign stuff together. Well, let's just say I wanted to uh, do this again. So I can add a column here. So just a custom column. We'll call it end of email address. We can then say, okay, I want this column to be at test.com. So this is going to be the end of some potential email address. We're going to hit OK. As you can see, that comes in. And then you can simply do some pretty, again, pretty cool stuff. Stuff I said you could do inside Excel or Power BI. Today I'm just going to show you inside the edit queries functionality inside Power BI. So there's a handful of ways you can do this. I'm going to show you one. Uh-oh, let me not do the shift this time. We're just going to hit control and grab the names. Add a column from example. So let's put player dot cute at I'm going to give this name at tst.com. Again, the system just automatically recognizes how I want this email address to look and does it for us in the system. So all this functionality that, you know, at first I showed some of this inside of Excel, just quickly already dumped it together. Well, here you go. Now you're able to see it inside query editor or edit queries. All right, so we could then take this data if you want. Let's apply these steps and see what we get. We can quickly identify just the average time it's taking for orders to go out to our customers. I'm do it a different way. Let's look at this. Let's see here. So these are the sales folks. These are people that are... Um, generating the sales. So these are the sales reps. These are the orders shipped. Let's go out here and see where I put in All right. So now we've got the average of days for ship for orders to actually ship out. Let's see who's got the lowest average versus highest average. And again, everyone's staying pretty reasonable um, for the most part. Um, there's nothing that sort of stands out from a sales rep perspective when it comes to that. Let's look at it by like order type maybe. So what data do we have in this orders that we can actually look at that may be helpful? Let's look at it by category. So good thing. Uh, for the most part, all the orders are look, look to be shipping out at around the same average. So that's good news. There's no abnormalities there. So again, this is just a really good way for you to be able to look at your data and determine if there are any things that are really standing out as it relates to uh, how your orders are being shipped out to customers. What's the average days it takes for those orders to get shipped out? Um, you can begin to sort of, you know, look and see who's falling, you know, outside of that average point, right? So let's say the average is 3.9. If art and binders and some of these other ones up above are sort of falling outside of that norm or the average, you can start to wonder why or see what's causing that to happen. Um, so again, it gives you a little bit more flexibility to be able to understand your data, understand what's going on inside your data. Um, and you can do a lot of this functionality or flexible stuff inside of edit queries. I think it's one of the best ways to handle a lot of your transformations as opposed to doing it on the visualization side of the house. Um, this, there's so much power inside this tool and so much functionality um, that I just would, you know, I highly recommend you use it if you haven't. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, I told you this one would not be long. I really just wanted to show you some of the functionality in edit queries. If you watch this and you're like, wow, I wish I could learn how to do something like this, this or that, you know, feel free to leave a message down below and I'll definitely get to show you guys those things in future videos. Thanks for joining us. Have a good one.